So some of you may be looking at this watch and going, haven't I seen this watch reviewed before? And yes, technically you are correct. So before we get into everything, I'm going to cover what I believe happened here. I first reviewed the Undive Dark Sea, which is pretty much the exact same watch as this Crafter Blue Hyperion last summer. Now in that review and video, I specifically said I felt something was wrong with the company, that they were on a downturn, something was sketchy, and, and I basically said, you know, buy at your own risk. I had my own issues with communication and emailing with them, and I really didn't know what was, go on, uh, what was going on with the company, so it was hard for me to even recommend it. Fast forward now to December of 2019, and the Crafter Blue Hyperion has been shipped to all of their Kickstarter backers, and that was one of the problems with the original Undive. People weren't getting their watches. I believe there was a misprint on some of the dials as well. There was a whole mess of issues uh, with those watches. So now, what I'm about to say is not confirmed, but it's what I believe. I believe that either Crafter Blue or the parent company that owns Crafter Blue or one of the factories that Crafter Blue does business with had a bunch of these cases made and when problems hit the fan with Undive, Crafter Blue either, uh, said, as I said, being the parent company or their parent company of Crafter Blue that owns a factory or Crafter Blue just decided to uh, buy the cases off the factory. One, one of the two has definitely happened and they've now released their version of that uh, Undive Dark Sea and they have rebranded it the Crafter Blue Hyperion. Now it is not a one for one copy. The case dimensions, the case size, everything else is the same. Um, I shouldn't say everything else is the same, but the case itself is the same. The overall look is the same, the hands, the dial markers, but there are some noticeable differences. Um, one of the noticeable differences is you now have a different rubber strap. It is one of Crafter Blue's rubber straps. I've talked about them before. Fantastic rubber strap quality. It does have fitted lugs and you do get all the same, um, rectangular holes that you get for great sizing on the wrist. Uh, again, Crafter Blue makes a fantastic rubber strap, so no issues there. You're also getting a metal bracelet. A very, very nice metal bracelet. Uh, it does not have uh, fitted end links though, so keep that in mind, but a great clasp, nice bracelet. And that is included along with the purchase of this watch. It is not a separate piece. The other big change that you're looking at is the SW200 movement. Uh, the original Undive had a Seiko NH35. Here you're getting the Salida SW200. And technically another big change is that this is marked Swiss made. Now, I'm gonna say that again. It is marked Swiss made. And uh, for those of you who are wondering why I'm saying that, well, there's a lot of reasons really. And I'm hoping to get into it more uh, after the holidays here. I am recording this in December. And after the holidays, I hope to launch a new series uh, specifically for YouTube. Uh, they'll be under a separate playlist on YouTube here. And more of just my thoughts and opinions and, and different subjects in the watch world specifically and uh, what is going on with them and everything like that and just my opinions on many different topics. And one of the first that I plan to cover is Swiss made, the transparency behind it and everything else. So of course more on that on another time because it is difficult for me to really get into that on a review by review basis. But if it matters to you, this watch is now marked Swiss made. Those are really it for the changes uh, of this watch. Um, you'll see the case back is a little bit different too. It has a brass Crafter Blue logo that is embedded 
under glass. It is see-through. Uh, you'll see it here on, on, on the uh, B-roll footage. But um, those are the changes. Well, I actually should say there's one, two other tiny changes. One would be now you have the hash marks from your 0 to 15 on the bezel. That was not previously there on the undive version. And the other, which I did not notice this really until I was looking back through the images of the photography that I had taken for the website, which was is the date is not only loomed, uh, but it is also different. It is white on black. The previous version, the undive version, was black on white. But the fact that it is loomed was a nice touch that I did not originally notice. Uh, bezel action is very nice and crisp uh, as it was on the undive version. Uh, almost basically the same issue that I have with the crown, even though it is a very large crown I, I do for whatever reason find it difficult to uh, get into position and kind of screw back down and that is probably just because of the case shape kind of similar to you know certain Seiko watches with that case shape um, Zodiac Ocean Air as I said in my previous review comes to mind when I look at this watch as well As far as I'm concerned, the watch now is better than it was when it was undive. And I liked the watch when it was an undive piece, but I couldn't really recommend it. I couldn't really be enthusiastic about it because of what was going on with the company. Now here you have it with Crafter Blue. They've upgraded the movement. You're getting a strap. You're getting a bracelet. Um, it really is a nice package overall. So if you want to see more, click the description below. Links to everything, including a full review on this piece over at watchreport.com. Check out uh, some of our other reviews. You can check them out here at the end of the video. I'll have a couple suggested. As always, like, subscribe, comment, follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you very much. Talk to you on the next one.